We're back, mate. Mate, we are. This is this is um this is Nostalgia City, USA. It is Nostalgia City, USA. Line. Good state. Good mm, state over there. Mm, um, pass through um Hamal Town. Hamal Town, yeah. Mm, Hamel. Mm. Uh Quabatsi Lake. Quabatsi Lake. <laughs> uh just off the border of New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's around some actual, you know. <laughs> yeah. I know, no, it's great, mate. It's what has it been? A year? Mm, Maybe not a year. I don't know. Ten Since months we've at least. sat and had a podcast. Mm. Oh shit, I don't know. Yeah, it would have been nearly a year. I haven't recorded a podcast for like six months. Ten years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, since infancy, I reckon. Yeah. Since we were a little child. Just fucking, I don't baby, know what we're doing with that. Baby they? humans, yeah. But um, what's going on, mate, anyway? How are you? Mate, what I'm you, what's, very well. What's, what's pumping you up? Anything? Lots of things are pumping me up at the moment. Um, I'm, uh, I'm obsessed with writing. Writing, mm. I just love writing. I think ever since I um, <clears throat> started writing that first book, it was like this, just like... I'd, it just like I just found my child again. I was like, oh, fuck, I've forgotten that I used to do this, you know. And, um, yeah, so I'm writing my second book at the moment, um, which I kind of took with me overseas, um, just largely about kind of like meaning and experience and trying to um, help people come to a greater degree of self-awareness um, because that was kind of the thing that I was um, attempted to try to find when I went overseas as well. Um, so I'm doing that. It's a oh, I've got a massive snot fucking rag <laughs> right there in the nose from deep town to fucking Booger. Yeah, Booger City. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've just actually landed in Booger City. Yeah, exactly. So, um, That's well, chapter four. Well, yeah, welcome back. If you're yeah, only no- listening to this, make sure you look at the YouTube. It's fucking picked a gold mine. <laughs> put it right in the water. Oh, we've just lost all this. Is yeah. 12 seconds in. <laughs> 12 seconds in. Anyway, let me tell you about my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, but all right. So go back to this book. So yeah. pitch it to me like... What's the self-discovery you said? But mm. what's like, um, what do you mean self-discovery? Okay. So I think we live mm. and are more or less inclined to live on a very superficial level um, in stay and age. It's very hard to spend time with yourself because you can always get a little dopamine hit when you need. You can always love get dopamine. a little, love a good little it's dopamine good, hit. It? <laughs> oh, great, mate. I want some now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It is great. But um, all those little moments of... Um, of where boredom would normally be, you can get rid of now, you know? And I became interested in this stuff when I... Because I wanted to be an AFL player, you know, like a lot of us did for many, many years. And then I got cut. I was like, okay, I'm not good enough. And then I was like, okay, well, fucking CrossFit then. Mm. So there was still this kind of external need for validation to prove myself athletically. And then athletically. And then... As um, opposed to athletically. As athletically. As <laughs> yeah. opposed to by the yeah. feet. Yeah, my feet early. I was always trying yeah. to prove my feet. Yeah. So yeah. I went from yeah. AFL to podiatry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, AFL clubs are like, bro, why do you keep fucking massaging your feet all day every day? Kick the footy for what once. You, I thought you wanted that. <laughs> yeah, that's nice right. Nice heels, dude. You're like, oh, sorry. I thought this was an, the, the orthotic <laughs> football league. <laughs> <laughs> the trail off was epic. <laughs> oh shit! No, yeah, go on. Um, so yeah, so I always wanted to prove myself athletically, yeah, like and most people do. Most young boys want to be big and strong and famous and great at fucking whatever. Absolutely, yeah, and um, and then still I an adult me over here, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And then um, I still think I have a little bit of it, but um, <clears throat> I. Stopped doing that. And then after CrossFit, you know, then it was CrossFit, then it was weightlifting, it was gymnastics, all these things. And, you know, it was just this fueling this addiction for, there was some sort of hole in me that I didn't realize, you know, it was fueling an external need for validation. I think it came from dad. Um, I think I craved my dad's love the most as a child. And um, the only time I would really receive that sort of validation was when he'd watch me play on play the footy. Mm-hmm. Play the footy. <laughs> and this is going well, mate. <laughs> um, fuck it. It's nostalgic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll let you go with that one. Yes, you, you did. Yourself. But I saw the, which I was saw good, the smile. Which was good. I was like... <laughs> the footy? <laughs> there no, you no, go, go but it sucked. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think a lot of that came from, from um, dad's validation, which is no fault of his own. And then when I stopped doing CrossFit, um, I really wanted to move to Bali. Um, my missus and I, we moved to Bali and then I, that kind of like self definition of Tom Ahern, the athlete, Tom Ahern, the CrossFit, Tom Ahern, the AFL player. Um, I kind of, I felt myself losing touch with it and then I felt myself, um, for the first time, not immediately trying to attach myself to some other sort of persona or some other sort of like definitional label that I could, um, build up and, Mm. you know, explore that side of my ego. And I was like, what the fuck's going on here? And it really scared me. Like it really scared me. There were lots of, lots of, um, hairy nights, lots of nightmares because for the first time in my life, obviously when you're over in Bali, it's a different world. Mm. Um, I really had this time to 
actually get to know myself, you know, and um, that kind of manifested itself in the book. So I started writing who I thought I was, who I thought I had been, who I thought I needed to be because of other people. Um, And then, so effectively the book is kind of this idea of, you know, there are so many things that the ego will attach itself to, to feel comfortable or safe or feel like it fits in or whatever. But largely we are um, influenced to a pretty high degree based upon the desires of other people, you know, mm-hmm. and unless we actually give ourselves time out, um, which can be really difficult because if you never give yourself time out and you, you know, you've got this buildup of stress, what you haven't, um, what you've neglected is probably a lot of trauma and a lot of pain and a lot of, you know, fear and, and stress and, you know, things that you actually need to go through, um, before you get to the good stuff, which is mm-hmm. like, wow, I, I know myself to a pretty good degree now. I can kind of figure out. I know myself at least to the extent that I know why I am the way I am, like why I always get triggered at whatever, why I always like go for this sort of girl, why I always like, you know, am am resentful towards person type A, B, C. And once you find that area, you can kind of start to build the ego the way you would like to see yourself become. Um, So... That's kind of like what the book is about. The first part of the book, it's based upon um, Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Mm -hmm. So when I was in, um, when I was uh, at CrossFit, I was um, coaching at CrossFit Balaclava and Nick, who's um, Beyond Rest, uh, Mm -hmm. Beyond Rest Nick, he, um, I was having these sorts of conversations with him and he kind of just looked at me and he was just like, mate. Sorry, that sounded like the most Jewish name. Nick. Beyond Rest Nick. Oh, Beyond (laughs) Rest Nick. I don't know why I was like, Beyond Ray, typical Gordon. bloke from Balaclava, <laughs> yeah, bloody Resnick. So true. You know, Beyond Resnick. Circumcised Nick. <laughs> <laughs> that's his first and last name. Yeah, that's right. Nick. Yeah, yes. Oh, I'm going to leave so that one. Fun. It's oh, fair rhyme there, but anyway. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> no. Dick. Yeah. but no, yeah, so um, Beyond Resnick. He was, um, we were having this chat and he just kind of looked at me, you know, because he's fucking, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty self-aware, right? at least I see him that way. And he's like, mate, Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life's but a dream. And I was like, "What? Strange thing for fucking a bl- weirdo." To say to- so he's staring at you. Yeah. So I'm just picturing this. He's he's just standing there, watching and he's about you, six foot five. Watching you do. He's something. like staring down and at me. And I'm like, goes, "Do you want me to? Can I speak to you for a minute?" Row, row, row your boat. Yeah. He, he said the whole the whole thing. Or, really? Whole thing. He's so relaxed really in himself. Strange. He just said the whole thing. Oh, super strange, strange maneuver for the first because I had to go and coach the class. Mm. For the first three minutes, I was like. That- Fucking guy's cooked. <laughs> he screamed me right out. But it was like the best thing I like he could have said to me because so I was what just do you like, mean? Yeah. he basically just said, "Chill, life is a dream." If you, because I, I I went into this stage of trying to figure out what he what he meant, you know. Yeah. Um, and basically, the book is based around the theme of row row boat. Part one is find your stream. Part two is row your boat. Part three is life's a dream. Mm-hmm. And basically, the premise of that is we first have to come to an understanding of who we are, so we have. To, to, a, to a deeper level than perhaps who... And this is if you have a calling for it. Mm. Which if you, if you want to know a little bit more about yourself, if you feel like there's something, it's like, why the fuck do I always do this? Mm. You know? um, so finding your stream is number one, just deeper personal understanding. Um, part two is row your boat, which is essentially chill out. Like, I think that's really, really poignant for this day and age with the entrepreneur lifestyle and, you know, especially if you're doing some, exactly, exactly. Chilling Um, out, um, try not to row too quickly to get to where you're going to go anyway. But also, you know, the way I I use the analogy in the book where it's essentially you're going to hit um, logs along the way, rocks along the way, which is basically just fears that you haven't transcended yet. Mm. So you want to just keep the boat at a steady pace and if you do those things then part three is life's a dream Mm. and basically what we want to do in life is hit a flow state which is essentially partake in actions that are means without ends so if you can find something that you love where you love doing it purely just because you love doing it Mm. as opposed to doing it for or once I do this then I will you will lose yourself in that experience Mm. and that was my biggest takeaway from writing this book it was which was so ironic because I was writing this book and I was losing six seven hours a day writing and reading you know I was a terrible boyfriend you were actively proving your own I was uh, proving proving your own hypothesis or your own um, exactly way that you look at the world I guess I I just found something that I find a lot of flow with, you know, and I love, I love writing and I love 
fucking talking to people. So I have you to thank for that for the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I think um, I think one of the things you said a lot of stuff there. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I'm like, shut up. It's all it. shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just joking. Just joking. I loved it. Um, but one thing you said was pretty cool. Like I think because um, me and you, since obviously we've known each other, have probably been through like fucking a few lifetimes worth of stuff really because we're pretty <laughs> we deep have, thinkers mate. and all that whatever yeah um but i think it's really interesting when you say when you really kind of get to know yourself because you know one of the things that i think that i'm much better at these days is um in regards to knowing myself is being more way more empathetic to myself mm. you know what i mean like i know that i think in the past like if something wasn't going my way or if i'd offended someone accidentally or if i'd had a bit of a falling out with you know my brother or so you know, whatever it was, mm. I'd really stew on that really quite heavily. Um, but now, I'm kind of just like, I know that I'm not perfect mm. and I'm okay with that. Mm. You know, like, because I fuck up all the time still. Yeah, you know? everyone does. And, we all do. Yeah, and I remember, um, I it happened when um, I was on mushrooms uh, the other day and just, I had, um, the experience had kind of ended and I was having a shower after it. And I was in the shower and in the shower, I just kept having these real vivid dreams and or vivid daydreams, I guess. And I was just thinking about like, all these things that I had in my in my life that weren't really going to plan and weren't really weren't ideal, you know, and, mm. and a lot of it was like, you know, probably my fault. Not that, you know, I'm pointing blame at myself or or whatever. But also I was kinda like I just kinda relaxed and had a my I kinda like had a heavy heart, had a big deep breathe outwards breath to myself and kinda was like, you know what? At least you understand you you mm. fucked up here and you fucked up there and you probably fucked up there as well. And that's okay, you know, mm. you're not because you're not perfect. And I know that. And in the past, I would have been, I can, you know, what do I got to do to fix this and whatever. And now it's just, you know, I'm a lot better at being not perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's a really good point. And I think um, the beautiful thing about mushrooms, um, you know, which can move us into a world where we're much more well, I guess the mind is much more interested in experience and meaning as opposed to spatial awareness and separateness and, you know, all that mm. sort of stuff that um, makes us identify with the objective world as opposed to our internal landscape is the fact that you're given that time to actually process those things. And I think the best thing that you can do is try to, I mean, meditation is a very, you know, it's a fad at the moment. It's like a fucking kale juice, you know, mm. but I think a really good, form of meditation is being able to try to just sit for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and do like nothing oh. like just do see if you can do it you sit know stare at a wall just sit and sit in a wall oh, yeah bro. but I'm not, not even not even that. not even like listen to your breath like just see if you can just sit yeah you know because you'll find out that you'll if go you can't, partly crazy well exactly most and, people and myself that, included exactly right and what that tells you is that you're very you we have a tendency to be very far removed you know yeah. if you can't sit for five ten minutes by yourself then because addiction another thing that i go into this book is um is addiction because i was looking at my own addiction so i was mm. looking and addiction is a spectrum addiction mm. is not like a, a heroin addict on the street it is any sort of hole in the heart that is fueled externally mm. um and that can be food sex porn whatever it is even just like i was saying before that need for validation um and we'll find very quickly, like you even said something just before, which I thought was interesting, where you said that because you were so hard on yourself, so <laughs> internal world, you were external world trying to make all these things better, mm. you know, to, to find that homeostatic relationship in the mind. And I think a lot of the healing can actually be done just by yourself, just mm. by sitting down, sorting through the emails and just being like, okay... Wow. Sorting through the emails? Yeah. I listen it was a really good analogy. I listened to <laughs> yeah, it um, right. on a podcast and this like, guy was talking about the fucking yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now this guy was talking about um you know, meditation time to yourself is kind of like sifting was through this the an Prince email of inbox. Nigeria? Uh, yes, he was. Yes, yeah. His name was Unkatu. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the actual pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Now nah, go on. But um, the idea behind it is just like, you know, if you haven't done it, if you haven't if you haven't looked at your email inbox for a long time, you're going to have a thousand emails. Yeah. And you're going to like, oh, fuck, I have, I've got to put that fire out. I've got to put that fire out. But if you do it more or less, 5, 10, 20 minutes every day, you know, the stuff that is worrying to you, you've kind of, A, you've kind of already sorted through it. So it's it's not a big issue. Or it's like, oh, cool, I've just given myself time, you know, um, tonight to just chill out and be like, cool, I've got to sort that out. So the fine. analogy to like 
be aware of what's going on and kind of address it on the fly before you're suppressing him. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Is that what and, you're trying and to say? suppress, I think suppressing thoughts, experiences, traumas happens um, more or less subconsciously if we don't take the time to consciously give, you know, um, move through it. Mm. Um, yeah. So I was just looking into all this sort of stuff. I was really trying to understand my own OCD from a, you know, deep psychoanalytical perspective as well. Like, how the fuck could one day everything be fine and Danny and then all of a sudden I was having these incredibly intrusive sexual thoughts you know about my own sexuality incredibly intrusive thoughts about going to hell developing mental illness kicking young babies like these where the kicking fuck babies. literally I would have these terrible intrusive thoughts that like I would some like hurt children hurt the people I love um, and I was like babies. yeah literally <laughs> like, it, like it's I was like it's not great yeah like, it's no not, it was fine you know. it's fine it's just like <laughs> oh this it? is weird all the time <laughs> all the time it's like yeah. wasn't even a thought I was like yeah. fuck I meant to oh, do it mate. just booting kids last, over fences I kick 12 babies <laughs> yeah. yeah look it's just what I do you know we all <laughs> yeah. have our thing <laughs> yeah that's right but um some of us like to play basketball yeah exactly <laughs> I like to <laughs> oh, I won't say no, that yeah. Um, but yeah it's like where could all these thoughts possibly come from. Mm. And then I got really excited by um, Carl Jung and really excited by um, some of Alan Watts' stuff. And yeah, I was just really interested. And mm. then Dreams as well. Just got obsessed with it. So um, it produced this 145,000 word book uh, that I'm slowly kind of sifting through now. So cool. yeah, it's good. It's good. How many people do you reckon need to do all that work that you just mentioned? Like how many people... And, and, you know, taking ourselves out of the way that we think, mm. um, how many people do you think really need it? And how many people do you think actually ignorance is bliss and they're totally, totally <laughs> yeah. cruising, you know? Shit. Do I... we overanalyze things? Like, do, it, do, do people need to do that work, do you think? I think so. I mean, I, mean, I don't think people um, need to do... I mean, people can do things if they want. I think, I think it's um, universally beneficial to take time for yourself you mm. just like you know like all the financial ex- experts say pay yourself 10 percent first you know mm. i think it's good to you know because yes we are a collective we're a part of the human race but we're also individuals mm. and we all find happiness um we all measure happiness in our own ways mm. um so whatever little trick helps for you maybe it's like um you know some people genuinely love just having a glass of red wine but any kind of little happiness thing you know is is fantastic mm. i think you and I are certainly more right hemisphere oriented. We definitely look towards the, you know, the meaning experience idea. Like, why does that apply to me? The context, mm. um, as opposed to two plus two equals four. Great, move on. <laughs> yeah. You know, we need to know why, and uh, yeah. that can take us into like you know interesting roads, which I think is like why you and I are such close mates. You know, such weirdos, <laughs> such fucking weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just wonder that because you know, like so many people, I, it's everything's really so subjective when it comes mm. to like you know self-discovery and and mindfulness and happiness and wellness and blah 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 and i just wonder like how many what percentage of the population out there actually wake up and you know bounce out of bed and don't do fuck all to look after themselves yeah you know smoke smoke cigarettes drink beers and and, and yeah. they're pretty happy go lucky I, I just would love to know you know what the general populace thinks like and if this is the way that we think and that's like the way that we want to live our lives and mm. you know I wonder I, well, I guess the wonder, beautiful you know? thing about being a human being is the fact that like no one thinks the same you know mm. and what you get worried and happy about is completely different to what I get worried and happy mm. about and you know we can sometimes you know I, I always mm. used to like resent people like that I'd be like how are you so fucking happy mm. just doing that you know but then I'd, I'd be over here like trying to fight so hard for I actually think part of the issue is our expectation to pursue happiness at all costs. Mm. And I think... Do you mean ours is in mine and yours? The collective. Or populist collective. In whole? Happiness is like... I don't think everyone so wants people, to be happy. I don't think so many people focus on that. Yeah, well... I don't think enough people think about it. Think about happiness? Yeah, I think we do. Mm. Heavily. But I feel like... Because if we really did, then we wouldn't run our lives the way that we run our lives. Mm. Because mm. if you really... Man, you think about it mm. quite a lot, you know. And, and I think about the things that I know for a fact that studies have shown that money doesn't buy your happiness. Yeah, of course. But most of the people that work in this office that we're in, in the commons, you know, like 80% of them would probably work till their, you know, fucking knuckles are bleeding mm. to, you know, reno that house and put a second story on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Put that pool room on the on that second story. So, and that's cool. You know, like that's a little bit of, you'll get a little bit of a buzz from, from you know, buying things and having money, but it doesn't. But 
the whole world revolves around money, mm. wealth, mm. power. Like that, none of that shit matters. So knowing yeah. that, like, do people really covet happiness when we know how to fucking? Well, we know what doesn't get you there, yeah, and we still go through the same motions. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, we, we can become. <clears throat> I mean, it's an addiction, though. Like materialism is an addiction, mm. and um, you know, I think what we really want in life is just freedom. We just want freedom and the time to do what we actually really enjoy. Mm. Um, but people, that's why people work so hard. It's like, when I have so much money, then I'll be free and then I'll be mm. free. But then the underside of that is by working so hard, then you need the car because you, know, you, you, know, you need to make your life easy. You need the car and then you need the house. And the, Keeping up with the Joneses, man, is so fucking real. You know? mm. And you yeah, said a really good point before. It? You were like, we know, what, um, we know what makes us happy. And I was really thinking about that I mean, no, it doesn't make us ha- it doesn't make us happy as well. True, but I think we know what makes us happy as well because you look at the happiest people in the world; they dedicate their lives to happiness. The Dalai Lama dedicates his life to happiness. He meditates. He's always bit of a weirdo, though. He's a weirdo, <laughs> but he's happy. <laughs> yeah, he's happy. Yeah, you yeah. can't fault yeah. him. Key you know? to life, though: be happy. We're a rope. Not as weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you have a look at the guy, and and you he's have happy a look. As fuck, at, I'll give him that. He's fucking happy. <laughs> Tibetan Buddhist. You know, he's a leader of Tibetan Buddhism, I think, and um, the Tibetan. Buddhist school can get pretty esoteric and get pretty crazy. Mm. But if you look at him just from in layman's terms, there is no aspect of him that tries to um, be separate from anyone else. In fact, he's gone the other way. So even just the clothes we wear are a, a, a kind of a part of the way we like to want the world to see us like oh, yeah. yeah you know i have a tattoo we have a beard like i'm kind yeah, of this sort of person of who we are that we tell ourselves i'm this exactly. alternative you know alternative half hipster don't give a fuck yeah kind of entrepreneur that doesn't care like you know yeah. i would never wear a suit because i'm right. trying to prove to people that i don't care exactly. i don't like suits but that, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. but there is really a part of it that like i i dress this way for that reason i Absolutely. guess subconsciously if i really think about it yeah yeah you know? Totally, totally. Um, and you look at a monk and the monks go the other way to make sure they don't stand out. I've got torn white jeans on, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> yeah. So this is a very extreme the example. Other way. Actually, kind of, Tommy, Tommy questioned me straight away. As soon as he walked in, he said, basically said to me, you look like a bit of a flog, mate. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't For lack like of a better, Lack of a better statement, you were like, oh, white jeans. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mate. Trying to allude Not to the evil. idea that no, I don't like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but look, he wears a robe. He shaved his head. Um, he, he does. And his life is set up around smiling with people, helping them. Like, we, we know the metrics that make people happier. And that the happier we are. It's so There's this thing I read um, in, in a book. Um, it's called, fuck, I can't even remember what it's called anymore. But he was looking at the difference between pleasure and happiness. And a really interesting um, distinction is dopamine is the uh, neurotransmitter associated with um, pleasure, which yeah. is that more, 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 and it actually it actually starts to kill off the receptor sites in the neurons. So you have to have more of a rush to get the same amount of pleasure. Mm. So if you watch porn and you have a wank and you come, it's like okay, cool, that was really good, but more off like eventually you're gonna have to watch harder porn, mm. you know, because you need to get that same rush or whatever it is, yeah. you know. Happiness well, the on book, the book. Um, Lead, Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek. Have okay. you read that? No, oh, it's just similar. Similar. similar talks about stuff. talks about the difference between. Yeah, you know, it just goes deeply into you know dopamine versus serotonin. Serotonin. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's probably the same shit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, and then yeah, the serotonin idea is it the it was um transmitted through the brain to tell primitive animals that they have an available amount of resources, basically we have enough. Mm. So when you have serotonin pumping through, you're like, oh, cool. Everything you is the way it needs to be. You have contentness. Be a good yeah. Thing to say. yeah, exactly right. You have mm. contentment. And um, I think as hard as it is sometimes, because we all have that, you know, fucking beast within that's like, mm. it'd be so good to have a million dollars and have a fucking madhouse. And <sighs> that sort of shit. But then the more you can, the more you can take that time out, which I was saying before, which has been really beneficial for me, I, I've found what it, you know, at least at this very humble age, what um, makes me happy. And I thought it was that external validation of playing the AFL, you know, being CrossFit regional team. And now it's just like laughing with my friends, mm. writing my book, um, spending time with my missus, you mm. know, like all the very cliche shit. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Mm. But yeah, I think it's funny because, yeah, I think there's one issue 
that fucks it all. Because you said we know what makes us happy and I would agree to that statement as well. I would agree that we do know what makes us happy because studies have proven all that too. And mm. just at the end of the day, if you get t- told you're terminally ill, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. You want to spend time with your friends and family and laugh as much as possible. That's how you want to go out, right? Yeah. That basically is the, the way to prove, you know, what, what actually makes you happy. That's so or true. fucking, you know, another zero on my bank account is not going to make me happy yeah. when you're terminally ill. So, but the thing is, it's just, we know that as well as we know the money side of thing. What doesn't, the, what doesn't make us happy? Mm-hmm. S- studies, we, like anecdotally, we mm-hmm. know deep down, but we can't put it together. Mm. Consumerism's fucking cooked us. It really has. <laughs> it really is a bit of a machine. You know, you know? it's very did And you know, the, the difficult thing for a lot of us, I think, is that we fail to realize that if you don't, if you don't actively partake in personal psychological discipline to find a deeper connection to yourself. There are billions of dollars worth of marketing industries out there that are trying to figure you out. Mm. So they're going to figure you out before you know yourself oh, they've already and then you'll just be out. wide. Exactly. We're already figured. Google, it's incredible. Facebook and, well, probably just those two companies alone have, have we're, we've, we're figured. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, they've definitely. got us. If you told yourself the story of yourself, from your, you know, biographical, you know, part of your brain, you're like, mm. you, you write, I am Tom Ahern, I like this, I like that, this is how the world sees me, blah, blah, blah. And then Google did it. Yeah. Google's got you. Yeah, it's true. You it, it would be close for sure. <laughs> yeah. It would be scary. Yeah. But, it, uh, <clears throat> Tom Ahern, creep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy knows everything about me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. But I, I think you do have to, I, I really think that if you're not happy with the way things are, Go within before you go out. You know what do you mean? By go out. If you're not, if you're, if you feel like you're capable of more, if you're, if you're fighting intrusive thoughts, if you're sad, if you're worried, if you feel like something's not right, explore that rather than trying to prove yourself. You know. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah. Tr- rather than chasing that external validation. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Um, I um. Yeah. Are you? Do you meditate at the moment? Yeah. Yep, yep, most days. Mm. Uh, I found that diary writing is um, probably my best outlet um, and dream analysis. Like, I just get so much from dream analysis. Mm. analysis. I just pages and pages of, of um, yeah, going into that world <laughs> because it's a, it's, a, it's a non-biased... Like, when you have a dream, a dream is fascinating to me. Like, you have a dream, you wake up, think about the way you talk about a dream oh yeah, I was in this place and you know, you're know you watching yourself do all these things but you're kind of attached to that self at, at the same time. Mm. You know, like, oh yeah, I was here but then I changed and then I became that person and all that sort of stuff and there are heaps of different ideas about what kind of dreams allude to but Carl Jung's idea was that dreams um, attempt to resolve some of the traumas or, you know, confusion or indecisiveness that you've experienced in in conscious awareness and this is why for example that 80 percent of people that suffer from ptsd will have nightmares relating to that experience that gave them the trauma because the mind is trying to go back to give itself a a an answer so that if that happens again we won't react like we did then Mm. because you don't go through that pain exactly when you react like you know, reacting, moving, like when someone scares you, like oh, you do this before you even realize what's going on. Yeah. And then if you haven't updated that cognitively, you know, because it's body first, emotion second, mind third. Um, if you haven't integrated that into the mind, it's like, oh yeah, well that person, when he pulled a gut on me, this is what I probably should have done. You know, mm. understanding that it's going to keep replaying all the time. And traumas, you know, a trauma is a spectrum. There's a spectrum of trauma, you know, from everything from, you know, heavy, heavy sexual abuse, rape, all that sort of stuff, down to little things that your boss said to you. You're like, oh, that makes me feel shit. Mm. And you're like, oh. so constantly trying to integrate those subconscious reactions into the mind um, is really beneficial. And that really helped me um, with dream analysis because a lot of that stuff comes up, you know, and then you can you can write about it and you're like, oh, okay, I wonder why this keeps coming up. Why am I always in this person's house, you know? Mm. I have, a, um, I have a recurring dream mm-hmm. that <clears throat> I think I might have told you about this at one point. I'm sure I would have at one point. And we've actually, I reckon we've laughed really heavily about it. <laughs> it's when oh. um, the bad guys are chasing me and I can fly. Oh, yeah. You know what I told you about that? Yeah. I can always, I can like hover. 
Okay. No, not hover. I can glide. I can glide. Yeah, yeah. So if I get enough speed up, and I've got to be fucking going. <laughs> <laughs> if I get up, speed up yeah. and I've got to get like I've got to have some sort of a a rampy setup or like a bit of a bit of a, a ledge yeah. not like a cliff but a ledge yeah. um, and if I get enough pace up if I'm running full tilt if I'm going flat knacker <laughs> I can glide but then Shit. once I get once I get in the air due to the wind and a few factors and a bit of you know gliding yeah. skill yeah. I can I can get away I can I can effectively fly okay but it's a full nightmare is it every time no at no point in time can I ever fly in any other dreams unless I've got like king of the bad guys and all his fucking goons and gangster squad just chasing me down. So who are the bad guys? Like, I don't do you know, know them or nah, like, what do they look know. like? Always the same. I don't, I don't know if I ever see them in the dreams. Shit. You know, they're just, it's always the same people that are trying to get me. Wow. You know, and it's, this has been a recurring dream for about 10 years. Really? And I reckon it was due to the fact that I used to sell drugs a little bit back in the day. Mm. You know, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like that's what it is. Mm. I feel like. Why, why do you think they're bad guys? Because, well, when you're doing shit like that, when you're, when you're fucking around in that kind of world, like yeah. you're breaking the law and you're doing, you know, it's not a positive impact on society. So. I've always probably because no one really knew about that, you know, too much, and I, I never got. I nearly got busted with some drugs one time, and um, you know, like no one really, no one really knew, and I never, mm. never came out. So it's always been like pretty tightly kept, you know, secret that I that I did it for a bit. And um, I think the fact that it's always been like a secret of mine, I guess, mm. it feels like I'm forever holding onto that secret, mm. you know. And mm. this is probably the most I've talked about it ever before on 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 a, on a, on a, television. On, on, a on a podcast or whatever. Yeah, I may have alluded to it before, or maybe dropped it a very small mention, maybe. But you know, I think you know what? I like, think the first episode we ever did, you said there was like three things you wouldn't talk about, and like the first ten episodes you spoke about two of them. I <laughs> yeah. think this is the third one. Um, I think it was something yeah, like the that. You like the old. Lady boy run in. The lady one. boy running was another uh, one. That was famous in episode eighty seven. Episode whenever, whenever it was. point one. <laughs> yeah. Straight into. Oh, I'm not going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about the it. Second one was. <laughs> yeah. Um, Something like that though. You know. Yeah, it was. Something. Oh, I think that was one of them. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because my nan listens to every show. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Yeah, I know. She does. Sorry, nan. Oh, well, I'm a good bloke. You should sell to her, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a, <laughs> yeah, nan loved loved the loves a cat in the day. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, but but I think yeah, and, and analyzing that dream, I feel like, and I don't know what I would what I would have to do to to actually move on from this fucking dream. <laughs> but it's genuinely been with me for ten years, mm. and it's just it's just like it's just every time I close my eyes and I go through that, I'm just I have a harrowing eight hours. Yeah, you know? yeah. Always heart rate just oh, you know what a nightmare is. I guess I don't have to explain it. Like heart heart rate pumping and just sweating and just like, and then. Yeah, it's just, it's never left me. And <clears throat> I've always just felt maybe the bad guys are the good guys. I can't really remember right now, like, but I'm always, everyone's hunting me down and yep. they're going to get me, whether it's like it is the police, maybe and the, they're the good guy or whoever. I'm just, I'm getting hunted. That's yeah. kind of what it is. So, and it's interesting because, you know, I've never done any dream analysis. So I've never done any dream journaling or whatever, anything like that. Um, I've written down my thoughts in a journal, you know, obviously, but, um, but I've never, yeah, I've never gone to it. But, but if I really thought about it, for sure, that's what it would. <clears throat> that's what it would. Well, I mean, you could look at it two ways. I, I think sometimes the best things we can do in life are um, integrating pattern interrupts into the way we live. You know, so like just go a different way home. See how that. It's so easy to fall into habits. You know, fall into uh, the unconscious program. And I think like the mind works in a similar way. Like if you started to explore if you just change the scope there, because it sounds like you're trying to run away, run away, run away, and then you hit this place of just pure freedom and you're like, fuck yeah, I got rid of it. Could it be perhaps, and I don't know because like I just don't know, but you finding that freedom is actually the ignorance and the disillusion of the own world you've created. But what you could actually do is turn around and face the bad guys who are actually trying to reintegrate you into society. And mm. that would find a balance because one of the things that the dream analysis talk about is that all you need to stop having those dreams is conscious awareness of essentially what they mean. So if you keep mm. having this dream, yada, 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 and then you begin to write it down because essentially like diary writing is having a conversation with yourself from an objective standpoint. You're like, you're writing your thoughts down, you're writing your thoughts down. If you are not your thoughts, which we know that we're not our thoughts, who is the one talking to the thoughts? Mm. Well, that's the awareness that's the observer of the thoughts mm. then you can keep going deeper into that but 
Um, thoughts are these things that come from fucking nowhere in response of trying to understand shit that, in layman's terms, shit that nearly killed us or made us really scared. And um, thoughts are fascinating, man. They're like, given we think in a language and in pictures that have been given to us by society, you know, mm. all that stuff. Everything that we see is society. They're not our own thoughts, you know. Mm. So it's just the mind trying to... Um, put that in a safe place so that if that shit happens again, it'll know what to do. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. Mm. Um, you know, while you were talking then, I thought of the um, episode title for this show. Oh, yeah? Thoughts, Dreams and Kicking Babies. <laughs> <laughs> With Tom <laughs> Fuck it out. But anyway, That's yeah, not bad. No. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, it, um, it, is, it is pretty interesting. So yeah, yeah I've, actually, um, I've actually moved right away from it's so funny, man, because I'm, I'm, you know me, and and I know you, and we're always you <laughs> we're know. one big happy family. <laughs> That's it. <I'm> done. <laughs> I know me, you know you. I me like you. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, anyway, so, but I actually, you know, I'm always like, fuck, I want to be like happier and more grounded. Blah blah blah. blah. Always trying to learn more about myself in that regard. And I've totally, it's so funny. I've, I've totally dropped meditation yeah for the most part yeah probably like three or four months i stopped journaling about six months ago Hmm. my cold showers have gone from a minute and a half at the end of my shower to about fucking 25 (laughs) seconds about seven droplets hit me (laughs) and then i'm out and then um but i'm fucking in a probably a better place than i've been in a long time you know Mm. it's interesting that quest for just figuring out what what's going good but um, well i mean you definitely engage in work that's very meaningful and you have a lot of autonomy in the work yeah, and i think i'm just a lot less stressed you're a lot less stressed you know it's, i feel like having having no adventure it's just like fucking it's win yeah it's pretty it's pretty win and i've also definitely. been doing the gut health stuff i've been mm. playing around with you know microdosing on mushrooms so i've probably just um i have been meditating a little bit too you know like i haven't fully fully dropped it yeah but um yeah it's interesting you know i think um i think with all that stuff I think if you've just got a fucking, just an array of bits and pieces that you have in your arsenal mm. and, and you just keep working at it and you... Pull them out for different reasons, yeah, different times. Yeah, Definitely. I wish, i tell you what I wish though. i tell you, because as I said, I've been going, you know, really good and, and whatever and like, because I've been, yeah, so you, you, you have so much going on at all times. You can't, it's not, you can't get a sample size where you're like, you know what? When I uh, microdose on mushrooms every once a week, I feel fucking great. And I'm yeah. Or, 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 you know, to, to, to have that be the answer, I would have to have not been doing this gut health stuff. Mm. You know, like, is it the gut health that, you know, mm-hmm. really working on your gut health and, and teeing that up is is making me a happier person more well and blah, blah, blah. Or is it the fact that, you know, I'm way less stressed or, you know, I've actually been seeing my mates about It's like, what? It doesn't really matter. I'm not really stressed about it, mm. you know, but I'm just, um, yeah, it's funny. I've been just on this, you know, absolute tear to try and you know be the best version of myself and then and i've scrapped everything that i thought was like the key to it all originally and then i'm now i'm absolutely cruising up but i I do think it's external influences that have been probably lifted you know definitely yeah stress of the stress of financially being fucking you know having the old skirt pulled up and yeah of the old hummus <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah hummus tuesday <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right yeah but i think it can also become like a real um painful point trying to find happiness all the time because mm. you you only you only know happiness by sadness you only know fear through joy you only know pleasure mm. through pain and the more you try to chase happiness the more you're if you chase happiness you're defining yourself based on all the areas that you're unhappy mm. you know if you're if you want more joy in your life, you're defining yourself based on all the areas that you're fearful in life and, and, and you're not joyous. So I think just like trying to find happiness now, just be like, or being actually, you know what? I'm going to scratch what I just said then. Being really okay. Like if you're scared, mm. fine. Yeah. You're scared. Who cares? Yeah. You know? You're a fucking... You're, 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 you're a fucking pussy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, like, you're a punts, mate. Yeah, yeah you just suck. <laughs> live with it. you got yeah. no mates. You know, don't be okay Everybody with it. hates you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's like... Uh, it's um, it's probably there for a reason. You know? Yeah, nah. You're probably scared for a fair reason. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, as I said, I'm way better with that. You know, like... When I have bad days, you know, nowadays, it's not... I think empathy is massive mm-hmm. for me, I reckon. Um, I think in um, business and, you know, leadership in business, you know, um, 
I've always, I've always had a really small team at, at, at Adventure Fit and I was always, you know, running and rushing around. And we have a decent sized team now at Athena and I think I have some soft skills that probably allow me to lead that team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have no hard skills, but I have some good soft skills. And I think the key is empathy mm-hmm. to, to, to other people and to yourself, mm. I reckon. And, and one of my employees told me that, you know, when I asked them, I interviewed him about um, the first six months of working with Athena and one of the h- highlights, one of the things that made them want to work with Athena and want to, you know, do everything they could to, you know, but, you know, be part of the team or whatever was um, empathy for me for, for a few things. And mm-hmm. it highlighted that. I was like, oh, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. You know. I never would have thought of that, but it's just, it is something that comes a little more naturally to me now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I also apply it to myself. You know, I think empathy is uh, like, because for example, I, I was in this stretch where I was just, I'm, I'm pretty good every day. I feel feeling really great. But I remember at one point about, probably about six weeks ago, um, I was just, I was flying. Every day was fucking great. And, and I was actually probably having beers like probably once a week with like my mates. And I'd probably get, get pretty drunk and feel a bit shitty, but like just laughing more than I'd laugh, you know, like cleansing the soul. Like that night with me, you and Mac, Mac's mm-hmm. 30th. That was oh, a perfect God. example. Felt like a fucking that was a good night. fucking dirt the next day. Yeah. But I was like, I woke up going, oh, I feel so shit with a big smile on my face. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but then I went and had, um, I went out and I had, couple of beers on the Friday night for some reason and I had um, half a um, gram of mushrooms and that was fine. I just was going to microdose that night anyway um, but, and then I got pulled into some beers and I was like, that's fine. I'll just have half a dose. Gave me a little buzz or whatever and then the next night I was on the beers, beers, beers and, um, and then I went out to my mate's party. Had beers with my mate in the day. Went out to my mate's party and then I ended up taking another half a gram of magic mushrooms. No worries but mm-hmm. I just think probably just... I don't know, I didn't need to do that. So mm. I was kind of pushing a little bit and whatever. And then my mate Bush came up to me and got me on the nose beer. <laughs> Just one nose beer. Yeah. But a big... Did, so, so you put Heineken up your nose. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but Heineken, yeah, I mean, that? Coke on a key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've actually put beer up my nose. So I was like, how do I answer And by this? nose, I mean hummus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but so I ended up having a night on the gear. It, one line of Coke and half a gram of mushroom. Mm-hmm. But fifty beers, you know, yeah, yeah, and that I think, um, I think it's like the no se- uh, the no sebo effect. When I get on the gear, I, I, I talk myself into how bad I'm gonna feel in the week mm-hmm. mentally, mm-hmm. you know, because one gram of co- uh, one, well, one gram of coke, but <laughs> one line of coke, um, although it was a little hoofer, like yeah. it was a decent little, <laughs> you know, um, it's not really gonna do that much to you. Mm-hmm. Really, it's not up here, it, it, the body, whatever. It's really. It's not going to fuck you up, mm-hmm. but it fucked me up mm. because I think I was telling myself that you've had coke now, you're going to feel fucked for days yeah, and days. Yeah, days. Yeah. And I did. I felt actually so fucking... I didn't want to leave the house for you know so long. I was like, I was hard on myself. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? But then after you know feeling pretty poor on Monday and, and, and then you know I kind of said to myself, you know what? You're not always going to feel like this. No, of course you know? not. And no. that's not something that I had the ability to do back in the day, you mm. know? So, although you're feeling shit, you're just like, all right, cool, man. Just, you're going to have to ride out the storm. Yeah. You know? And I think, I really always think about it like that. I think that word for me is probably the last 12 months has become really important to me in the way that I treat other people and the way that I treat myself. Mm. And I think it's, I think it's pretty rad. I think it's powerful, you know? If you can, you know, if you can understand that, you know, it's going to be okay and see things through, you know, from a different perspective, I think it's. It's been rad for me. I really, yeah. I think a lot of people measure how their day <clears throat> has been based upon like one thing that's gone wrong. You know, mm. like the way the emotional mind works is that, um, you know, if if you say to me, you know, how are you, mate? I'm not going to go through with my logical brain and look at all the things that happened to me that were good on the day and all the things that happened to me were bad and try to weigh them up and be like, oh, based upon this chart, I've had a good day. You yeah. know, you say, yeah, good. Because it's just totally based on the way you're feeling right now. Mm. And more often than not, when we interact with people, we're engaging with them from an emotional perspective. So when you come home and you're like, oh, fuck, I had a shit day. That's really just your mind, you know, puffing out bullshit. Or whatever whatever the word is, yeah. based upon the fact that, you know, someone overtook you really aggressively on the way home from work. Mm. And I think if you can, this is where, you know, being mindful helps. And again, that's a really fatty word, but just get, like give yourself two minutes for doing nothing mm. and then just see what pops up, you know. Um, practicing that sort of stuff, 
you know, as it definitely taught me um, that I can actually choose to be happy. Mm. I really can choose. And everything that I do in life, um, I can actually reflect upon that and be like, oh, you know, that didn't happen the way I wanted to. But because it didn't happen, this happened, this thing was really great happened to me, Mm. you know. There's like an old, um, I think it's an old Buddhist poem um, or a Buddhist story, and there's like a Chinese. Make like, it rhyme. Yeah, I'll make it's it. a story. Make it exactly. Rhyme. Yeah, <laughs> there once was a man from Nantucket. <laughs> Challenge yourself. Yeah, yeah. He had a big penis and he could suck it. You know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, that was actually not bad. Oh, oh, that's the whole. It rhymed. Put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, God. But anyway, he he's he's working on the farm, oh. and um, I think his. Uh, you know, his son, his son, it's something on the lines of this, right? His son um, says, oh, you know, dad, can I go and um, jump on a horse to ride the horse? It's like, yeah, good. The horse runs away and all the farmers run to him and they're like, oh my God, that's so bad that the horse ran away. It's like, good luck, bad luck, who knows? The next day, the horse runs back to the farmer, the whole bunch of horses. And they're like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. That's so cool. He's like, yeah, good luck, bad luck, who knows? The next day, his son's riding one of the horses and um, he falls off and breaks his leg. And all the farmers run up to the guy and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened to your son. That's so bad. Good luck, bad luck, who knows. The next day, the uh, the military come to the farm and they're like, hey, you know, we need your son. And, you know, they look at him and he's like, oh, they got a broken leg. So they, so they go away. So he doesn't get conscripted. And all the farmers, you know, it's that basic idea that we never know how things are going to pan out. Yeah. But you can always have a neutral perspective. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's like the butterfly effect. Mm. One door opens, right. another, one door closes, another one, another one opens. You yeah, know? you don't have the, you don't have the, you don't have the luck of having foresight to see, you know, what how this will actually affect your life. Mm. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah, that's, that's great. You can find that space and just be like, cool. However, this will go. This will go. You mm. know, that's good. Mm. That's interesting. Um, so, since we had you on the show last, I don't reckon. When did we? Were you back from Europe? Last time you're on the show, I don't even know when the last time you're on the show was. I don't think so. No, nah. no. Nah, was- How was your what was your what was your overall what's the summary of Europe? Yeah, yeah, it was great, mate. It was good. Um, yeah, I think lots of lots of things I learned about myself. Um, didn't get a chance to see like a whole lot of Europe. We saw um, we were living in Bali for a couple of months. We lived in um, Scotland for a month, Ireland for a couple of days, just to see some friends. And they were living on a farm in France for two months. So that was like a really good time to practice my French, which was sick. Um, I think when we go back. Um, we'd love to like obviously do a bit more of Europe, um, but yeah, it was just it was just great. I think, especially for you know boys <clears throat> moving into adulthood, and I'm like 26, so boys I'm, to be men, boys to be men, yeah, <laughs> off mice and men, yeah. <laughs> there once was a man from Nantucket, <laughs> um, but you don't really get you don't get like that initiation that um, we used to back in the tribe times. Like, hey, now, you know, I'm teaching you about responsibility. I'm teaching you about, like, going off and doing your own shit. What? Just back in the tribe times. Just <laughs> like how you said back that. in the tribe times, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, go on. Old I Johnny understand. tribe times. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, all that sort of stuff, you hey, know. Old tribe him again, you know. Yeah. When we're in. <laughs> yeah, me and tribe. <laughs> tribe called Quest. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, back when there was, like, a, a younger fella, he was probably getting a little bit, restless and you know annoying the collective you know all the men would take him and you know go and do other sort of initiation yeah. shit they'd um, fuck him up they'd fuck him yeah. up they would they, yeah. they would and yeah. um oh man like you know what the biggest lesson that i learned was that melbourne is a fantasy land of fantasy lands like it's just the fucking opportunity that we have here oh yeah like where it's people literally cause a ruckus based on coffee yeah it's just like uh, and I'm not apologizing for that. I'm like, I'm so humbled to yeah. be a Melbourneite, yeah. but it's just crazy. Like being in Bali and like just meeting some of the, the happier people than us, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, but living in a place like this is just great. It's so good. It's really good. Yeah, we're pretty lucky, especially when you, um, I think uh, I think that's where, when I said that I've got a bit of empathy in the old fucking back pocket, I reckon that's because of how much I've traveled, you know? Mm. There's a lot of people... A lot of people haven't seen that shit. Mm. Most people. Mm-hmm. Most people haven't seen how everyone else lives. How poor the world is. You know? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, the fact that we're the 1%, we live in Melbourne, there's no crime, the fucking weather's, you know, pretty nice most of the time. We have we get paid bucket loads of cash. You're in the 1% if you earn more than $34,000 a year. Yeah. yeah. 
I know. It's rough, isn't it? Yeah. It's rough. It's just crazy. And yeah, I mean, and it, you know, we do complain about our coffee. I'm yeah. fucking spewing when they put the fucking <laughs> butter in after <laughs> they make the cappuccino. Yeah. Put it at the start. Yeah. Whip it up. Mix Mate, it's it in. it's the worst mix thing in the world. You know? Yeah. Slow oh, Wi-Fi. I normally just throw it back in their face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. 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 I wait till it cools down a little bit and then uh, I throw it in their face. Bill's here again. <laughs> yeah. You better get it right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Throws the gear at Johnny them. Johnny Tribal. So, no, nah, but I, I know what you mean. It is, um, it is good to know. I think, it's, uh, I think that's why travel is so good for people, you know, because mm. not everyone gets that chance to see how, you know, the world really operates. Yeah. We are not the way that the world really operates. Now, yeah. With our white jeans, you know. Yeah, ripped white jeans. Ripped white Imagine jeans. walking into a tribe like this. <laughs> They'd go, mate, we're going to go and we're going to take you for initiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The only yeah. difference is I'd they didn't mean to, to have rock. all the fucking rips in their jeans. You're like, oh, yeah, I want to be like funny Johnny Tribe tits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why right. I said tits then. <laughs> Johnny Tribe tits. Yeah, um, yeah no, nah, it's great. Uh, that's good. I'm glad you fucking loved it. So how come we didn't stay in Bali? Uh, we wanted, we just moved on. We, we we're always planning to continue to like travel, mm. um, and we we kind of reached a point where um, coaching wasn't us anymore, wasn't mm. for us anymore. That so happened that, pretty quick, didn't it? That happened pretty quick. Yeah, that happened really quick. I remember quick. speaking to you, and you were like, you just got over there same time as Mac, and I was like, yo, what's going on? And you're yeah. like, yeah, fucking loving it. It's great. <laughs> Weather's pumping, blah blah blah. And then I was like, yeah, cool. Spoke to Mac, same thing. I'm yeah. like, the boys are loving it. And then about. It's been a couple of months later and you're like, yeah, no, nah, we're in France. And <laughs> didn't like it. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> Wasn't us. And I was yeah. like, oh, I can ride over there. I know. Have fun in France. Yeah. <laughs> and never talk to me again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, we just, I mean, we wanted to travel like fundamentally. We were just like happy to um, do our time in Bali. Bali's great. Like I love living in Bali. Um, but... Um, yeah, it was a travel trip anyway, you know. And then Shabon just got back. Bali's a bit of a fantasy back. land, I reckon. Bali's a bit of a massive fantasy land. People living in Changi are in a Because it's the yeah, Western world living in like a very poor place. Yeah. So it's like nothing costs anything. Yeah, you know? right. I mean, you we're can actually, kings. you can go to places where they'll charge like 20 bucks for like a smashed avocado and shit. Yeah. You can do Bali cheap. Yeah. And cheap, it's fucking cheap. It's like, man, it's... It's one dollar Australian a week for a week's worth of petrol on a scooter. Yeah, like we pay seventy dollars to get around. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. they pay one. Yeah, it's we fucking... pay seventy bucks to get to the scooter store. Yeah, exactly. Before we yeah. Even get a scooter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to look up scooters online. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, it's just crazy. So yeah. you can do it if you have. Oh man, if you're an entrepreneur and you're working off your laptop, pff, live in Bali, mm. save some money, come back here and buy a house, do it yeah. if you need to. Do. I wonder if you actually get like a community if you're living in Bali full time. Because everyone seems pretty transient there, you know? Yeah. Like everyone's in and out. They're over there for a year. They're starting up a business. They're, you know, mm. living the backpacker lifestyle or the entrepreneurial, you know, lifestyle for a bit. Yep. What's it called? The, um, you know... Nomad. Digital, digital nomad. nomad or whatever. Yeah. Um, I feel like... Yeah, because I remember Dave telling me, like, people oh, that yeah. come in and out of the gym. It was like... There's like 30 locals <laughs> in Changu. He's like, yeah. you know, there's, 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 a, there's a few of us. Yeah. And then everyone else is in and out, you know? Yeah. I wonder what it would be like... Because I've thought about moving over there, obviously, and... and the fact that it's so transient hasn't stopped me from moving over there, but I've always wondered if I went over there, if it's just like delaying real life and, you know, delaying settling down or whatever mm. because of that transient nature. Yeah. You well, know, it depends like, what you want though. Like what, well, what does settling down settle mean down, to you? Though. Well, like, settling down to me means... Family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all it means to me really. Yeah. Just settling down, having having a having a um, partner and having kids, you know, at some point I'll definitely little, want to Little Johnny Tribe tits. Yeah. <laughs> little Johnny Tribe tits with his white little fucking ripped jeans and just, just a little fucking cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> just drinking buttered coffee in Port Melbourne, walking oh, a designer sausage dog. A terrible kid. Mate, my kids are going to be Kick nuts. him. <laughs> punch yeah, punch that's babies. Right. That's right. You're going to have to kick him a few times. Yeah, I'll But um, when they're babies, yeah, just I'll, to learn I'll them kick up him. good. Yeah. Fuck you, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, nah, so I've always just wondered if you know me going to Bali would just be delaying that real life because it's so transient. And, you know, everyone, it's kind of, It just feels like, uh, feels like a little piece of like time not really existing yeah it's pleasure town feel, yeah that's right it's pleasure, pleasure town. town is exactly how i would explain it yeah yeah it built, is pleasure built town. by yeah it's built by australians for australians for pure pleasure yeah for pure pleasure food nightlife fucking yeah. like people you're around yeah where they're like it's crazy everyone it's, has sex with everyone it's always yeah. hot everyone's getting their cds yeah. everyone's having sex with their food i'm actually you know. really thinking you should go over delaying there, that delaying Get that over there. Down thing. yeah 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 nah. yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I know. it's interesting, but mm, so yeah, it's good. It's good. I mean, I really like Bali, but I think <clears> um, 
I know. I'd love to see a little bit more of the world. I'd love to, I don't know. I, I love to write um, and I love to like learn things, mm. you know. I, I love, um, yeah. And I think at this stage, I'm just really fascinated with the mind. I just can't get myself out of studying the mind. You know, mm. I think it's everything. It's everything. Mm. It's everything. Who who we are, how we make decisions, um, how to find meaning. You know, all the stuff that, yeah, the I think is important personally. Mm. You know, yeah, it's all the it is all the good stuff. All right, well, it's late. I'm it cooked. is late, mate. I'm cooked. I'm cooked out. Eight thirty-five. I'm done, skis. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Welcome back. Thank you, my so, friend. So, uh, your um, you what did we agree to? Um, we agreed to seven bucks an hour. Seven bucks an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yep, yeah. fair. Contract yeah. in the mail. Contract and, in the mail. Uh, and I've actually seven Ford bucks. paid you for uh, for for a hundred shows. Yes. Yeah. So you'll That's have a good. check for seven hundred uh, seven hundred dollars in the mail, and yep. we we now own you. Uh, welcome yeah. back. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah. That's not open, is it? <laughs> yeah. All right. That's uh, that's show number one of a hundred. Let's let's go again. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Sweet brother. I'll. 